This is a lecture on net radiation. And net radiation is a really important aspect of um, a lot of hydrology and evapotranspiration research. Here you see in this beginning slide a, a depiction of net radiation conceptually. So like the word sounds, we want to determine the net amount of radiation that's available to do work at the surface, evaporate water, heat the soil, etc. The key difference uh, when studying net radiation is to realize that you have to deal with two forms of radiation. The short wave component or solar radiation and the long wave component or infrared radiation that's either being emitted from the surface back into space or there's also a stream of long wave radiation coming down from the sky or the atmosphere. And that's what's shown here. For example, in um, over summer vegetation uh, you might have a thousand watts per meter squared of short wave coming down from the sun. That's what would be reported by a pyranometer on a weather station. But only 800 is absorbed because 200 watts per meter squared are reflected back in space. On the long wave side, you've got 300 watts per meter squared coming down from the uh, sky, but, on, but 450 uh, headed back up emitted from the surface into space. So you have a, a net loss of 150 watts per meter squared. Um, and so when you take the 800 and uh, subtract the 150, you end up with a 650 watt per meter squared net gain of energy at the surface. As I mentioned, net radiation is really important when it comes to uh, calculating evapotranspiration. And you see net radiation appearing in all of our standardized reference ET equations. And it's a big term, uh, so you want to make sure you, you get it correct or it'll really throw off your calculations. So again, net radiation is the net amount of available energy at the surface. Um, it has the two components, the short wave and the long wave, or you could call it terrestrial or IR. And so when we calculate net radiation, we calculate the net short wave and subtract the net long wave, or you see the symbols that we typically use there. So again, just reminding you that the short wave component is uh, has a maximum wavelength around 0.5 microns, where the long wave component that we can't see uh, is has a maximum around 10 microns. So let's start off with the net short wave first. The net short wave uh, we calculate using the albedo. So we reviewed albedo in a previous presentation. So the net short wave component is fairly easy to calculate. You take your data, your measurement of global irradiance from your weather station and multiply it times 1 minus the albedo. So just like the example, um, it would in this case if you had a thousand watts per meter squared coming down, uh, you'd be absorbing 80% of that or 1 minus 0.2 if the albedo was 0.2. So um, fairly easy to calculate, but a big term, 800 watts per meter squared in this case, a lot of energy. So small changes in albedo can have a pretty big effect on NORT and on net short wave, excuse me, which can um, have a big impact on net radiation as a whole. Net short wave can be calculated on a daily basis or an hourly basis, okay? And so on a daily basis, uh, they use the same formula. For example, if we had a daily global irradiance of 24 megajoules per meter squared per day, we would multiply that by our daily average, one minus our daily average albedo. If the albedo was 0.23, you can see here we get 18.48 megajoules per meter squared per day. And then of course we can do that on an hourly basis as well as shown on the right hand side. Uh, in this case 700 watts per meter squared reported hourly from our weather station. Our albedo of 0.23 and so you see the calculation there of 1 minus 0.23 times 700 539 watts per meter squared for our net, net short wave radiation. 
So net long wave is a little bit harder to calculate overall and you have to estimate the downwelling radiation from the sky and what fraction of that is absorbed and then you have to find the emitted long wave headed back up into space from the surface and calculate the net impact of those two radiation streams. To estimate the amount of long wave radiation emitted from either the sky or the surface we use something called the Stefan Boltzmann equation which you see depicted there and a link to the Wikipedia page describing it. So the radiation emitted from a surface in watts per meter squared is dependent on the emissivity of the object. Emissivity is between 0 and 1 and the Stefan Boltzmann constant times the temperature of the object to the fourth power where temperature is measured in degrees Kelvin. Okay, So again the emissivity of the surface is kind of like the optical property of the surface in the long wave spectrum or infrared spectrum. Sort of think of it that way. And um, all surfaces have a different emissivity just like you know when we were talking about reflectance, transmittance, and absorptance. Um, in the same fashion different surfaces made of different materials have different emissivities and you have to know the emissivity of both the sky and your surface to solve these net long wave radiation problems. So the emissivity, here's just a table showing some of the values. You can see that metals often have a very low emissivity, things like aluminum foil for example, whereas things that are non-metal or organic like Look at wood, it has an emissivity between 0.8 and 0.95. Uh, human skin has an emissivity of 0.98, so they're very close to 1. Okay, That means they're emitting a lot of radiation and absorbing a lot of radiation. And you can see different values there. So a lot of our crops have emissivities close to 1. Here's out of your textbook showing some different leaves you can see the emissivities are all between 0 0.94 0 0.99 very close to one lots of other organic materials like fur or skin or also have a high emissivity soils can have emissivities between you know almost 0 0.9 up to 0 0.97 right in that range Water has an emissivity of 0.96. So we're kind of fortunate in that those of us that work in hydrology and ecology, soil and crop sciences, for example, a lot of our materials that we're interested in have emissivities that are pretty high and pretty close to one. But we often have to look them up in these kind of tables because it's very hard to measure emissivity directly. Uh, so often we have to estimate it. Now if we want to estimate net long wave radiation, again, it's the difference between the emitted long wave from the surface minus that was that was absorbed from the sky or surround the surroundings. The absorbed long wave is mainly downwelling radiation from the atmosphere. And the emitted radiation is that that's emitted upward from the surface. And again, we use our Stefan Boltzmann equation. We often assume that the emissivity of crop canopies is 0.97. And uh, again, remember that you have to use the uh, temperature in degrees Kelvin when you do these Stefan Boltzmann calculations. For example, if we had a crop canopy that was at 27.5 degrees C with an emissivity of 0.97, you see there how you would calculate the long wave emittance, uh, which in this case is 450 watts per meter squared. So now getting that radiation coming down from the sky is a bit of a tricky problem because you can imagine that if you had clear sky versus a cloudy sky it's going to have a different emittance. Um, and so we often use formulas to estimate the emissivity of the sky or emissivity of the atmosphere. Here's one that's in the textbook uh, equation 10.10 
showing how to calculate the emissivity of the sky from the vapor pressure of the air and the temperature of the air in degrees Kelvin. And there's lots of formulas like this in the literature that you can use. Um, and we'll look at some different ones as we move along and, and uh, look at some of the standards. But this is a nice handy one just to get started with. Sort of makes sense, right? The more humid it is in the atmosphere, um, then um, the more vapor pressure there is, higher the vapor pressure, the more, the greater the emissivity. So what we really want is the net long wave radiation, right? The balance between these two streams of, of, of infrared radiation, the downwelling from the sky and the upwelling from the surface. So you can see down here at the bottom, uh, we really want RNL equals the emitted long wave minus the absorbed. And you can see the formula there where those epsilons represent the emissivities of the surface and the sky where epsilon sub AC is the sky emissivity. And we're using the temperature of the surface and the temperature of the air, right? So we, there's an example there, given the air temperature of 30 and a surface temperature of 32. Uh, emissivity of the surface is 0.96, that would be like your crop. Vapor pressure is 1.9 kilopascals. Now I want you to estimate net long wave radiation. So the first step is calculating sky emissivity. We can just use equation 10.10 .10 to do that. See the calculation there? It turns out that's 0 0.83. And then once we have that, we're ready to solve the equation. That's the equation on the left bottom over there. If we plug everything in, we get a net long wave of 90.5 watts per meter squared. So the upwelling part is greater than the than th that it's getting from the sky. So actually there's a net loss there. System is losing 90.5 watts per meter squared okay, uh, over time under these conditions. And so finally we're ready to solve for net radiation of the land surface. So remember net radiation is the net short wave minus the net long wave. And here you see the full formula there. And um, RS is a global irradiance and watts per meter squared. You see the emissivities, the Stefan Boltzmann constant, and the air temperature. So if we go back to our example, the net radiation is net short wave minus net long wave. There's our two previous results and we sum those up together and we get a net radiation of 448.5 watts per meter squared. And that's what would go into our ET formulas for example. So we looked at these before from Apogee Instruments showing an example from the summer, an example from the from the winter and again the key concept is dealing with both of those two different streams of radiation independently to get your correct answer. And here's some net radiation data from Greeley, Colorado um, from the summer. This is in June and you can see that it's positive during the day with peaking up close to 800 watts per meter squared on a nice clear day and you can see the net radiation is negative at night. Okay, often, often around minus 50 watts per meter squared. So at night when there's no short wave, right, it's losing long wave to the atmosphere. So that's a key important concept with net radiation. So it's very um, usually rare to measure net radiation directly. Okay, that's usually only done in a research application. So something like a an ag weather network is not going to have a net radiometer on it, right? They're going to have just have a pyranometer that's facing upward. To measure net radiation, you have to deal with both the long wave and the short wave components. That's what you see here with this four component net radiometer. So it actually has four different radiation sensors on it. In this photograph, the left hand side represents the two long wave sensors, one facing up and one facing down. 
And then on the right hand side, the one with the glass dome, that's a shortwave sensors, a pyranometer with an up facing and a down facing. So the left hand side gives you net long wave and the right hand side of the sensor gives you net short wave. And then they just add them together to get the results. So these can be pretty expensive instruments. Most of them cost, even a low cost one might cost three or four thousand dollars for example. So they can be a very pricey sensor. And so that's why in most cases we end up sort of modeling the net radiation term from our pyranometer data from the weather station. So we take our pyranometer data, our air temperature data, and our humidity data, and we approximate net radiation once we make some assumptions about the albedo and emissivity of the surface that we're dealing with. So I think that's a good stopping point. I'll stop there and um, we'll continue on and do some uh, example calculations of net radiation uh, using various different formula.